everyone's Pete here so I'm back doing a bit more maintenance on my big rockified armor Senton here in previous videos I've covered quite a lot of the maintenance that you're likely to have to do on these 3S armors so uh, check those videos out if you haven't done already one thing I haven't done uh, which I'll do on this one is the spur gear here and I'm also going to be changing the motor plate to this one with the set hole positions so just to explain what happened to this uh, when it was new and was doing the first test drive on it, uh, it had a few sort of rollovers, nothing major. It started becoming noisy and also it became uh, difficult to push back and forth. The wheels seemed a bit seized. And uh, I mean, this, this sort of noise is fine. People sort of sometimes worry about that. I've seen people on Facebook sort of asking if that's not that sort of right. But, um, and what I did, I kept driving it, uh, which was very foolish of me. I should know better and I should have uh, taken it home and got it apart, but I didn't. So I kept on going with it and it seemed to free up a bit and then it packed up altogether. And basically the motor bearing had um, disintegrated and the, the gears looked very worn in there. And I think what had happened is in one of the rollovers, uh, the motor uh, position had shunted uh, to make the mesh too tight on the gears. And that's just put a load of strain on the motor and um, and the gears. So I did do a warranty claim and they sent out a new motor and pinion. I didn't actually ask them for a spur gear, which I should have done. So although I should have known better, really having had various RC cars before and, you know, if they sound bad, then there's probably something up with it. I think it was fair enough that it was a warranty claim because uh, you don't necessarily expect to have to go through your new RC car and thread lock everything. So yeah, that's what happened. And that's why I want to put the uh, motor plate on with a fixed uh, hole positions because it can't uh, the motor can't slide out of place I mean I guess it could completely come undone but um, I think that's more reliable having said that since I've thread locked this on the sliding motor plate uh, I haven't had an issue with it moving so I would strongly recommend doing the thread locking of that uh, of the screws onto the motor plate uh, which I have shown on one of the other videos so it's just a word of warning about all RC cars really if they start sounding bad or if the wheels are difficult to turn um, then there's something probably wrong so stop running it and get it apart and have a look so i've covered this before which is show you getting out the prop shaft it's spring loaded so you just pull that back there bearing comes out in the middle you just need to pull the back bit out there and there you go it's worth checking this bearing once you've got this out uh this isn't seized at the moment it sounds a bit rough i have freed this up from being seized a few times could probably do with replacing that Again, I've been through this before, but you just want to get this whole sort of motor power unit thing out. Uh, so I'm just going to unplug the wires first of all. And next, just need to move this little block out of the way, which is this screw here. And use the strap to help pull this to the side. So then it's just pulling this tab up while shifting the whole unit forward. Now, because this is full of grit, it probably won't slide so easily. So one thing to do is to get a flat screwdriver and poke it in behind there and try and lever this forward a bit. So it's probably worth blowing the dust out from under here while you've got this out. Right, that looks a bit better. I've got this uh, electric air blower thing, so very useful for blowing uh, mud off the RC cars. Just having a look to see if the mesh had gone out on this. I think it's all right, but I think uh, I don't know if you can see, but the teeth are quite pointy, and so I'm sure that's from when the mesh had gone too tight. And I did change the pinion out at that time, but uh, not the spur gear. Now, I've never actually done this, but I know there's a two millimeter hex screw inside that end. And uh, I think if you unscrew that, it will all come apart. All right, so there you go. So there's the uh, clutch plate and the slipper pads there. So there's that plate there and there's the uh, slipper. Then there's this plate here and there's a bearing in the middle. So there's actually three of these plates, which is something I didn't know. So there's one, two, three of these. So we need to remember that the more dished side of this is the back and that's what that goes into and these bits. So let's put these bits on the new spur. 
So the bearing's got a little ridge on it there, so that goes in from the back. And then it's one of the plates. Then it's that one. Then another one of the plates. And then the other plate to get onto the front. Okay, so I've taken the bits out of here to have a look. Uh, so there's the screw, and then you've got the little spring, and then there's these two washers, and a sort of, I think that's a little tiny ball bearing, and these have got grooves around the uh, inside, so they sort of sandwich that little bearing there. Right, so to put it back together, that one needs to go on there with the groove upwards. Okay, so then it's the little ball bearing thing. So then the other little washer thing, but with the groove pointing downwards towards the ball bearing bit. And the spring, and then it goes back into there. Also, what's interested to see is that uh, in the version three, it's got a plastic washer to stop this sort of coming on screw, which I think was a problem with the previous version. So I think it's sort of in there. So let's try and have a look at that. So it's just a little plastic sleeve that should stop the screw coming out. So that one goes on the back of there. So it's got that shaped piece there, which fits into that. So then that just screws back onto the front. So just looking at the instructions, it says uh, the tightness from the factory is uh, fully tight and then loosened by a turn and a half so i'll stick with that because i don't know any better to be honest one thing just to make sure when you put this back together is that the screw actually did go into the little plastic sleeve there so it might be helpful to use that bit just to keep that in place while you put the screw in the other side that's fully tight just undo it one turn and a bit that's it one thing I should have pointed out is to make sure that the uh, shapes of the slipper pads sort of fit into the shapes on the gear there. So if you're not familiar with slipper clutches and RC cars, the idea is that there's a bit of give in the drivetrain and uh, the clutch should slip before the gears get shredded or a drive shaft breaks or whatever. So I can demonstrate that by uh, using the prop shaft here. Let's put the adapter back in there. So for instance, if the wheels were jammed but the motor was still going, that should hopefully slip and nothing should break. You need quite a bit of force to turn that, so hopefully that's all right. So I've noticed it's harder actually to turn the back one. Um, that's quite firm actually. So hopefully that would slip before the gears get shredded. I wonder if they make it so the front one's easier to turn because the front wheels always take more of a hammering with landing jumps and braking and that. I don't know if anyone knows, then please tell me. Right, let's have a look at the motor plate then. So because I've got the 15 tooth pinion on this, uh, that will fit through that hole in the motor plate. Uh, if you've got the 20, I think you'll need to take the pinion off by undoing the grub screw there first, but I think I can get away with this. Wow, well, look how rusty that is. So I know I've been through a lot of water, so I might clean that up with a bit of WD-40 before I put it back in. So I think now we've got this apart, it's only that screw holding the motor plate onto this casing. Now the bearing seems fine in this, so I'll reuse that. So this uh, motor plate with the set holes was donated by Barry at Barry's RC Dump. Thanks very much, Barry. Right, so this goes back in here. Worth checking the pinion while we're in here. Looks all right, I think. Uh, I've checked that the grub screw's still tight, and I've threadlocked that before, so it should be all right. Got the 15 tooth pinion, so it's that one and that one. So I've got the motor screws here. I'm going to put a bit of thread lock on. It's got this Tamiya stuff, which is the gel. So I'm making sure I've got some on the um, underside of the screw and the washer as well, which is more important if you've got the sliding motor plate. Right, that's not going to come loose in a hurry. Let's see what the mesh looks like as they've done it. So the long end goes in that way. Yeah, that's how they have the mesh. So I think that is right. There's just a 
very small gap there, very little bit of play. Before I put it back together, just check this bearing. It's, uh, it still seems to be all right. So before I put this back in the car, I tend to put a bit of grease around here just where it meets the chassis, just uh, stops the dust getting in. Just slides back in. One useful thing to note is that you can adjust the clutch while the power module is inside the car if you just take off the little adapter thing here. So you can get your two mil hex in the end of there and get it onto the end of the screw. And you can uh, tighten or loosen that as required. Let's get the prop shaft back in. Make sure the bearing's on that little bracket there. Right, so we are back in action. Right, so there it is done. Like I was saying before, I think it was worth doing the spur gear because it's one of the things that wasn't covered by any of the previous videos. Uh, I think between this video and the previous videos, I've covered most of the things you likely to need to maintain on this. So that's it for now. Thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.